Hello, uh, welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. This show, we dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches all of us in our everyday lives. Joining us here today again is our exceptional co-host, Mr. Andrew Lanning. Yay. Andrew, the security guy. Hey, welcome welcome back, man. Thanks. Oh, it's so Happy good to, to have be you. here, brother. And, and Tom Feindling. Yeah. All right, from Intsights. That's correct. Intsights. Insight, I N T sites. Don't say Insights. You get the wrong website. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, welcome. This is uh, our cybersecurity show where we talk about all kinds of stuff, and you're going to tell us about in-depth security today. Absolutely. You were mentioning before we got on the air, though, we're going to do Black Hat DefCon here coming up in two weeks. Not yeah. even two weeks, right? Yep. Yeah, two. Yeah, two weeks. Oh, almost, yeah. almost two weeks. Black Hat starts on the twenty-sixth. Yeah, we've had the training days before. Yeah. So. Are you going to the training? Yeah. Oh, right now. What are you taking? Uh, I haven't decided yet. But oh, you get to pick at the last second? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you, nice. Your company has a good budget. <laughs> those, are, <laughs> those are a little pricey. Yeah, I are. always go in for the briefings afterwards. So uh, this is your first Black Hat, or you've been before? Uh, this is actually going to be my first official one. So official. official. So you've gone and unofficially? Oh, I was around there when You jumped the gates, yeah. snuck in, yeah. 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 good for you, uh, right on. Physical you're penetration. Admit, you're not going to admit anything. I don't tell all my secrets, right? <laughs> good nice. for you. Nice. Right on, so uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. First of all, where are you from? Because I hear the accent, so does everyone else. Yeah, so originally I'm from Israel. Uh, all right. Yep. And I started Coastal, inland, north, south? Tel Aviv, right there in the middle. All right, middle. right yeah. in the middle, okay. Yeah, right next to the seashore, like here in Hawaii. That's why I like it so much. Oh, kind of, yeah, right. Kind of feels a little bit at home. So you found out a place like Haifa? Uh, that's like one and a half hours away. It's like oh, for you guys to go to a different <laughs> island, right? <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> that's cool, from Israel. Now, when did you come over here? Uh, approximately four years ago. So, so all your schooling pretty much was done in, in uh, Israel? Yeah, actually, I kind of skipped school. Skip school. Uh, skip school. This is a hacker story right here. Yeah, we're well, getting <laughs> some details here. Yeah, really, like, tell yeah. us about how it, you it did just didn't this. need it, you know. Like, <laughs> but so, school anyway. Yeah, so I started uh, back in the days. I was a pretty tech savvy kid. Okay. So and then at the age of 18, after I finish uh, high school, uh, you get uh, this letter, and in the letter you have uh, a note that tells you you need to be at this base at this time, and then they take you to the army. Then you have three years of. Uh, Mandatory yeah. service. Mandatory service. So yeah. three years yeah. in awesome. Israel. Okay. I wish we yeah. did that in the U.S. Yeah. You know, I like it too. As a matter of fact, I think a lot of Northern European companies does it. Uh, Sweden, I think, is two years, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they so. take their ind your independence, and you become a soldier. Yeah. Mandatory. How was that for you? Mandatory. No, that was pretty hard. Did they the pick your job, or do they actually oh, you find a good you, fit for you? You don't get to pick your job. You just, uh, they run you for some tasks, and oh, then okay. you put you on the right position that you will be able to maximize your skills. Wow. So Thank God. So where'd you end up? Yeah. Where'd you end up? Uh, <laughs> I ended up in intelligence. Awesome. So yeah. Good deal. Some of the some of the units. Uh, that was dealing with intelligence back in the days. I remember it was almost like ten years ago. This is this uh, is all free. So you got out of high school and you went right into army intelligence. Army like intel. Wow. Yeah, training and so there was a lot of training with it. I'm, I'm sure. It was like yeah, at the beginning it was basic training. Mm -hmm. So running out there in the field, you know, getting your boots dirty, your hands dirty, mm -hmm. all that. But after like approximately a month, it started to get more, you know, civilized. So you got to get to sit back behind your desk and start doing. A lot of interesting things. Wow! So Breaking uh, out uh, like basic end map and then working your way through Wireshark and, and getting some cybersecurity under your belt and all, then all sort of things. Wow! So, yeah, it's getting pretty interesting. You did all that in high school. Uh, I bet you did. No, you? Why, why a shark? Yeah, that's you know. Yeah. Uh, and back in the day, that was much more innocent than what it is today. So I remember, like yeah. ten years ago, nobody was understanding the value of cybersecurity. And especially, I remember back in the days in the army when we were talking about, hey, you know, the Russians can just get into Hawaiian electric and turn off the flag on Hawaii. People will look at me and tell me, who is this crazy person? <laughs> uh, <laughs> That'll never happen. Come on, why would they want to do that? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> That's a good point. Exactly. Why not? So, you know, in Israel, because where we are, uh, we, were we were always under attacks. So we kind, of, yeah, yeah. We, we kind of had to build our capabilities very soon in the game because, you know, this being out there put you under risk and you need to build yourself uh, a safety net that will allow you first to respond to attack but also being able to develop capability that will give you some kind of advantage, advantage, advantage competitive, competitive advantage sorry, yeah. over the others. Right. Uh, that's kind of uh, what it is. And so you do a little defense and a little offense, maybe? A little bit of both? Uh, it was very, very early in the program, so we mm -hmm. kind of did everything. I see. Uh, you know, build a lot of capabilities. 
And this is one of the things that, you know, kind of connected me with 14 sides uh, yesterday. Mm -hmm. so, so after the Army? After the Army, I left to work for, uh, for a small firm. Then I moved to VMware. Oh, okay. And I worked for VMware for almost uh, six years. Future of the world, man. Yeah. Virtualizing yeah. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Virtual, virtual everything. Is, which is kind everything of, is a virtual service. That's virtualized right. Virtualized the hell out of everything. <laughs> we build micro-segmentation. We did operations for micro-segmentation. So see how those things are working and how they work in the real life. Because it's a great idea. Like, when mm -hmm. you look at it, and this is where we started back then, micro-segmentation was like, wow, I can just go ahead and create those small islands and make sure that, you know, everything doesn't talk. Good. Only the right thing can talk with the right thing. You and connect your little sandboxes around. Yeah, yeah. And you have like 2,000 firewalls running across your network. All of them are virtual, getting up and down. So it looks like very good in theory, but then when you have to put the rubber on the road, then you hit some challenges. But mm. I think getting through this process and you know being able to run through that and see how organizations maturing into it and all the operation stuff off it. Uh, was very pretty interesting ride. Was that the beginning of like today? Today you talk about these containers, right? So was micro segmentation the beginning of that, or is, um, it, is it not? Related? I think that con like we deal a lot with containers mm -hmm. these days with insights because we build a lot of our capabilities based on containers. So I think containers they have a security aspect mm -hmm. as well. But I think that from an operational perspective, on the engineering landscape, they provide a lot of advantages beyond security. I see. Micro segmentation was mostly focused on security. Mm. And I think that being able to virtualize it all and being able just to get a load balancer in like three seconds and firewall in five <laughs> seconds and just, you know, so get the scalability and, down. Is and the rapid deployment of devices in That's this virtual correct. environment. So for our audience, virtualization is when you replicate something in main memory somewhere that could be a physical device in the real world. Yeah, right? and you just take a, you know, uh, a Windows box that used to be tied to an hardware and just virtualize that and make it being able to run you know, almost on any hardware anywhere, and you can just move it around across the wire. You can take it to the cloud, you can bring it back, you can do almost whatever you want with it. And with that, there are a lot of security challenges as well. So again, for our audience, ah. the cloud is, is not really this actual cloud in the air where, where things not? exist. It's multiple data centers around the around the earth where things get, get stored wherever you need them to and backed up to wherever you need them to. But you can access them from anywhere on the internet. Depends so on your it's, policy, it's, yeah, uh, depends on your policy. But theoretically, if you, you set up a server, it could be in Portland, it could be in Virginia, it could be in uh, Canada, it could be in South America. Absolutely. It doesn't really matter. It depends on how fast you want to get to it, where you want to get to it from, yeah. where how is it going to be, how much you pay for it, mm -hmm. and what vendor yeah. you're using, right? Yeah. So this, this cloud uh, virtualization that we're doing now, uh, I think, companies are just glomming onto that. They just love this, being able to ramp up a whole bunch of servers. Amazon Prime Day mm -hmm. today. I, I would imagine since uh, Amazon Web Services, they virtualize almost everything. Yep. I bet they had two thirds of their services ramped up to maximum capacity and they have backup servers upon backup servers because they're expecting more business. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, it'll go away because they don't need it. So it's you awesome. don't have to have a standby physical data center. You just ramp up these virtual servers, and you're ready to go. And then when you don't need them, you can put them back, you know, store saving them for later. Power, saving, saving power, saving power, processing, energy, CPU blah, blah, blah. time, gotcha. yeah. You can move them between on-prem and off-prem and just play with all those, like, kind of weird configurations. That That's what my cyber students love. They, they like to stand up like a container on, on their personal computer or on their laptop, and they can go and they can play within this little sandbox, and they can't harm any other devices on, on the network, right? Yep. But they can talk to all the systems that are in that sandbox. Awesome. So that's where we play with uh, Wireshark, Nmap, stuff like that. I see. So they can't harm anybody else, mm -hmm. yeah? So you've been doing this from the very early days. I uh, mean, wow. Yeah, I've been doing that, like, you know, right after the NACR acquisition that we had in VMware. Before that, I was doing also cloud management as well, so I have a lot of background with virtualization, operations, uh, security operations, and just how to get it into their real lives to their biggest customers in the States and just so roll it out. you were probably one of those kids that saw The Matrix and went, oh yeah, that could happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no surprise here. Yeah, that could happen. That's totally real. Uh, there were a couple of <laughs> other, like, you know, uh, movies that I was watching back in the days when, you know, like, all those, like, stars were, like, were able just to change traffic lights when they have, like, when they rob a bank and they drive on oh, the, the street. Oh, the Italian job. The yeah. Italian yeah. job, Ocean <laughs> Eleven, I think, yeah, was yeah. one of them, too. Right. Wouldn't that be cool? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, that can be done, right? That can be done, that can sure. Be done. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's that's a little cool. scary. And you can do it from your from your room uh, behind your desk. But. Or so in your mom's basement. <laughs> in your mom's basement, absolutely. I'm kind of wondering, since, coming, since you uh, ultimately came out to California, what do you, uh, tech technology and, and tech savvy amongst, you know, the kids there versus the kids where you grew up, you oh, know, is there a, quite a, a disparity? Because, I mean, you know, they're starting to teach at a younger age in the schools in the, in the mainland now, but it sounds like you guys started very early. And I didn't know, was that uh, everyone had access to a... A sort of advanced education as much as they could handle? Um, I think that, you know, just growing up in Israel, you're, in Israel, your sense for security is much higher than what mm -hmm. you will get in other parts of the country. I don't think that a lot of people in California feel that, you know, on a daily, on a, on a daily basis something could happen to the state, but mm. in Israel, you know, that's a much more complex situation. I see. So I think growing up sense. in this environment, and this is what we saw that, you know, before cybersecurity became such a big you know, thing around here, it was a big thing in Israel because Israel from was under attack from day one. Sure. So wow. I think that you know, when you grow up with this mentality, it allows you to just you know be more focused and aware uh, about the ta about the challenges, about what you would like to achieve. And I think it's just you know, by the culture of you know growing up out there, you get a lot of it to mm. to be you know part of your DNA. Sure. And I've seen this with a lot of smaller countries. The people that I know are from smaller countries, and, and especially Europe, I have a lot of European friends. They grew up with multiple countries very nearby, so they have a very international view on, mm -hmm. on multiculturalism, other languages, other ways of thinking, whereas the United States. Especially California. They especially think they, California. They, think they are the country. Like, you know. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so after you finished all that and you came out to the United States, did you come straight to Hawaii or? Uh, no. Or, I mean, I California. Came to California, yes, yeah, straight to California. Which, so. which, which city? That's a big state. So I used to live in San Francisco. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. In Palo Alto, so it's uh, a lot of commute in every day. Palo Alto. Okay, yeah. that's a nice. Have you ever been out? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. There, so I used yeah. to live in Oakland oh, nice. way back when. Yeah, no, back when I lived there, I'm old. <laughs> uh, our, our main worries were not security. It was uh, raccoon and deer. Ah. And <laughs> it's a different city now. Yeah. <laughs> you can take care of that pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. Now you can. <laughs> <laughs> so Palo Alto, you worked in Silicon Valley. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. All right, so big commute every day. And then... You st you're still there now? Were you? Uh, no. Were you there with Insights or VMware? Or? No, I was there with VMware. Okay. So VMware located out of Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. So Bob uh, spent some time over there. Uh, and then I moved to Southern California uh, for a job opportunity, uh, a small startup. Uh, but then Guy, the founder of the company that I'm currently working for, uh, which is a good friend of mine since high school. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, okay. Kind of like uh, offered me the job. Uh, and I decided to leave my previous place and move to Insights since it's just getting back to my roots, uh, security, cyber, all the interesting, st all the interesting stuff. Um, and I think that kind of what we do is like pretty, like this is what's going on these days and getting into the heart of it and understanding it and being able to help companies to protect themselves and proactively uh, take some steps uh, against those bad people out there. That's that's a big advantage that we can provide. And I like to be on that side of the equation. How many way. offices do you have? Is it just the one and you remote to every t place else, or do you have actual physical locations? Oh, we actually have physical locations. Well, where, where are you guys at? So our uh, R&D center is based out of Israel, obviously. Okay. So, you know, uh, we have a bunch of engineers there, and we have, our, like, the major of our security analysts uh, based out of there, uh, we have our New York office, uh, heart of Manhattan. Um, on the island? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 pretty interesting what's going on That's there. a successful business when you got an office on the <laughs> island, yeah, man. On the well. island, yeah. That, that's a good zip code. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's a good that's zip code. Like, not as good as this zip code. No, not as good as this. <laughs> I mean, it's good for business zip code. Right? Right. I got it's it. Good, yeah, and we have another uh, big office in Dallas. Oh, awesome. No representation in California, but I'm like, I kind of think that after this visit here, visit here in Hawaii, we, I might, you know, recommend that instead of a California office, we should uh, go straight to Hawaii. I, don't know. I, don't know. I think that is a great idea, and I support that. Do, I'm do, right you serve, behind you. do you serve clientele in, in Asia? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So this is so the gateway. So this is the gateway. Yeah, so this, this would make sense for you guys, and it gets you, you know, on the beach more often. Absolutely. <laughs> To do business. Sure. Yeah, of course. Business from the beach. It's, board it's a great, it's it's a great concept. Well, you can't help it. It's just it's we're here on the beach, and <laughs> the water's right there. That's you can't true. help it. 
two just, blocks away from the office, right? Yeah. What do you do over your lunch time? That's right. Go that, it's, a, it's a board meeting. <laughs> a board meeting. I love that. Okay, we're going to take a little break. Okay. Uh, going to pay some bills, and when we come back, uh, we'll continue with what your company does, and I want to hear the gritty details. Okay. Okay, we'll be right back. <laughs> Stay safe. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know it's not supposed to be in your everyday. So protect your everyday. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. Welcome back. Here we are at the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. Thanks for joining us today. Again, we have Mr. Andrew Landing, Andrew, the security guy with us, and yes. Mr. Hello. Tom Feindling. Thanks for having me. Of hey, Insights. Yeah. Hey, yeah. everybody. Now, we wrapped up with your history, how you got here, um, some cultural differences, and, and uh, your education, and uh, your three years in Army Intelligence in yep. Israel, and now uh, we were talking about maybe you're opening a location out here. I hope so. Let's find out what you do and get into the nitty gritty details. Why is in-depth intelligence so important and why do you guys do it? Yeah, so if you look at a lot of companies out there, they're putting a lot of money uh, towards protecting their internal network. So they put like great firewalls together, endpoint protection tools, next-gen endpoint protection tools, and you know all these uh, great devices that you put within your network. But without understanding what's going on on the outside world, you kind of live in the dark. So the idea of insights is like get you the visibility to what's going on in the other half of the cap. So you know you can see the what's going on within your network. You train to bad, you track the bandwidth, you block some IPs, but the firewall will block what you will tell him to block. But what you don't know about, it's very hard to deal with. So being able, and we go to the entire internet, we go to the clear, deep, and dark web, bring you threats and risks. That Let's are describe that. So for our audience, again, we have some non technical <laughs> members out there. Tell no them worries. what the difference between those, those internets are. Absolutely. Okay. So it all starts with the clear web. And the clear web is basically what all of us are familiar with. Everything Google indexes. Exactly. Right, okay. That's exactly the definition. So if you look at uh, social media uh, pages, if you look at page sites, uh, if you look at application stores, search engines, everything basically that can be indexed by Google, this is the clear web, which is, by the way, a small fun function, function of what's going on out there. Yeah. That's window shopping walking down the street, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, window shopping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then you have the deep web. And the deep web is getting a little bit more interesting. It's st it still can be accessed through normal protocols, like usually like web. But those are closed forums and closed communities that you can get in without using them or password or a token or whatever it is, or pay yourself in. But it can be indexed by Google. And there is a lot of stuff going out there as well. Then the last these are, is, uh, just, yeah. just so we take a look back, that is usually, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that the website hosts will put up like no robots text files or something like that, telling the search engines don't index us. And it's also behind closed doors, so you need to get a username and passwords to get in, okay. so Google can get to those places um, just by nature. And they don't want to be on Google as well. So and this could also be accidental, right? Somebody puts up some of this stuff and thinks they put a username and password page up there, but behind the scenes is still open. If they did it wrong. And gets, if yeah, they, if they yeah. did it wrong, right? If there's yeah. a mistake, that, that appears in what we call the deep web. Uh, uh, not so much. So that, uh, that, that's a deep web, yeah. So if you if it's behind closed doors and you can access it, you know, we didn't use name and password to get in, that's a deep web. Mm, so okay. a lot of people and a lot of companies don't have access to those forums and those like closed communities that people just exchanging bad stuff in there, usually tutorials about how to hack your, uh, how to hack your organization. <laughs> Um, Should you call that the shares. dark web, though? No, the dark web is actually going one level down. So those are usually a level down. Yeah, those usually places. <laughs> yeah, not up, not up. <laughs> yeah. So those, the, this is the bottom of the iceberg. So uh, usually, uh, what you need, you need a special like 
gear to get in there, usually the fourth browser to browse some onion sites. And the good thing about that does provide you anonymity that you would not get through normal web browsing. So we, let's stop again right there. The onion networks that you're talking about, w instead of .com, .net, Dot whatever we have dot onion, yeah. which is a domain that's not recognized by browsers natively. Browsers won't know what to do with dot onion, yeah, so you have to use a browser like Tor, T O R, yep, the onion router, the onion router, <laughs> and uh, that's what it stands for, right? Yeah. And uh, that will recognize onion networks. That's but it's right. not like we have Google for the onion networks. It's kind of chaotic. It's kind yeah. of chaotic. So yeah. there is some search engines there, but I would not trust them. Uh, but but you guys search it. We search it, yeah. uh, they but, you, but you need to know. It's like it's not like can you go to Google.com and say, "Hey, I want to find you know those five things, and that will bring you results." It's probably the first one will find you what you're looking for. Right. You need to know what you're looking for. You need to know the website's address. So just think about the internet that you know and aware of the clear web. Uh, without search engines. How do you get to certain locations? And they're not you nice guess. website names, right? The dot uh, uh, was no, no, one, two, three, four, X, Y, Z, X. Imagine that people don't want you to find it. Yeah. Right, right. The right. dark web doesn't have click advertising going no, on. No, you know yeah. I mean? They don't have Google Ads either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no. yes, it's but just that's what evil stuff can happen, right? Weapon sales, human trafficking, yeah, so it's child like, pornography. It's I mean, the really data, bad stuff. Data, you know? And advertise for what you want and advertise for what you've got, right? Most of my life, I think, is probably on for sale. Oh yeah, yeah after the OPM got checked. hacked. I don't think you're that interesting. <laughs> we checked the other day on you. You're, you're, you're. You know everything about me now. <laughs> How sad is that? So wait, you guys will uh, search this this place in our universe, the whole internet. That's correct. And apply that as part of your in-depth analysis for threat intelligence for mm -hmm. a certain company. Yeah. So the idea was take some of the capabilities that we did for the military and just bring that into the commercial market. So we know that a lot of organizations today uh, would not have the tools that we had back in the days just to start building all those capabilities and also maintain them up to date because those sources that we are dealing with, they are changing on the go. Like, you know. Oh, daily probably. Daily. Sure. Hourly. And, yeah. You know, hour. you need to stay on top of it. You need to maintain your access. Sometimes you need to pay your bills because sometimes you pay, need to pay your way in. Uh, so, and you need to maintain your avatars and your reputation. So it's not an easy job to do, just being able just to, you know, go out there, search for your company name, come back, and just see what's, what is out there for you. So being able to maintain all this network, and the way we do it is actually pretty interesting, because we don't want to go and take your domain name and just go and search it on some dark web forums, right? That would not be a smart thing to do. So uh, we develop some capabilities that allow us to bring all the information in into our servers in the cloud. And you search and it there. And then provide the match, like then uh, look for the matches over there. So you actually do some big data. We do a lot of So data. Is, is a lot of analytics done on the data you gather, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. Billions of web pages on a daily basis getting for wow. our algorithms. And the idea is just to provide the best protection that we can for our clients. Yeah, and this is what caught my eye, so that's why I seem to come on, because I don't, I don't know if people understand that you know, there are clues and ways to find out that things are built, people are building tools to attack you with. And those tools may be similar to the domain that you own, just for example, and these guys may come across that, and then you get the idea of what kind of threat is actually being built to perhaps attack you with. And this is super valuable to business. Yeah, absolutely, just being ahead of time that, for example, you're going to uh, suffer from a phishing attack or a DDoS attack can get you a competitive advantage, right, on the attacker. Being able to know that you will have five or ten employees that are going to be attacked on a, on a certain phishing attack, that's even better. So you, now you don't just know that you have a phishing attack being launched on your organization, you might know where the individuals that already gave their password in the past that are on some kind of list uh, that probably people would try to fish them again. And they, those people could also be high profile in your company. Yeah, they have, they'll exactly. search yeah. VIPs, sure. yeah. so they can do name searches and things and like that. And people also trading these things. You know, oh, I, yeah. I can ask, like, in the University of Hawaii, who are the top people that already gave their password in the past, and they are they have access to a certain you know information. So this is interesting. We've gone from the phishing attack from emails to spear phishing, identifying individuals, mm -hmm. to the high profile target spear phishing, whaling. Yep. Right? That, yeah, that's absolutely. really interesting. So you identify this up front. You can come to people and say, look, based on what we have, you're probably a target. Yeah. This and is probably coming down the pike very soon. 
that's why we're very strong with the gaming community. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's even, great. The tools even went further. In some instances, they were able to show us some of the folks that they knew they recognized like the work that they do. So they kind of maybe know where this work's being done. Uh -huh. And we and had a, a list of, of some characters there that are avatars, I'm sure, is what we saw. But. Well, let's explain avatars to the studio audience. Can you tell us what an avatar is and why it's important? It's just an identity, a virtual identity that you have to maintain. So sometimes in order to get your way into somewhere, you need to just have a reputation. You know, you don't just show up at the door and say, hey, I want to get in. So there are a few ways to get to those, to those places that we try to get into. One of them is to get a recommendation from somebody. So you know me, and I need to maintain our relationship for a while, so you, therefore you recommend me to get in, and then this is how I get my way Sounds in. like high school. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, it, you just happens, it happens in a little darker place. But. <laughs> this is a college frat party. <laughs> I get it. He's cool. Let him in. Yeah, yeah, that's that's in. exactly what it is. <laughs> Sometimes you have to pay your way in. Uh, okay. So yeah. you know you maintain a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin wallet, and you just pay your way in your monthly okay. fee, weekly fee, daily fee, whatever it is. And so you guys, uh, okay? Um, yeah, and you know sometimes there is some other ways you need to prove yourself or do certain things in order to get into those sources. Uh, but the idea is that we maintain all of them up to date, and whenever there are new ones. Uh, we always get behind them and be able to provide you the information. What can you tell us about? It's a sample client and some of the successes you've had and uh, some of the things you might have prevented. So can you share any of that? Uh, yeah, we, we, I, can, I can give you some, some good stories that we've to generalize it so yeah, we can yeah. anonymize the data. So, uh, <laughs> just, um, I, I talked earlier about gaming. So yeah. the amount of money that's going on the dark web or to those like uh, gaming programs that the big casinos have in the world, it's crazy. People take stolen credit cards and move money into those accounts, gamble on them. And mm. sometimes what it would do, uh, let's say that you know I will use a, a credit card, remove some of stolen credit card, remove some of it into my uh, gaming account, and I will get into a poker room with you and with you that you guys are my friends, and I will lose the money, and you guys will win oh, the money. Oh, nice! Wow. Right, you could oh, that, that's the money. That, and that's a clean money, right? Yeah, you just laundered the money. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's cool, right? Brilliant. So, uh, uh, see what you learn on the show. Uh, it's right. awesome, right? Yeah, some homework for you guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're almost out of time. Anything you want to tell us before we leave the show today? Tell our audience how to be safe. Yeah, uh, tell yeah. us how to be safe. Just, just try to be safe. Never give your password to anybody. And if somebody write you a, like an email, hey, it's the help desk. Send me my password. Send me your password. Never do that. Don't ever do that. Yeah, <laughs> never do that. Never do that. Well, thanks for being on the show, Andrew. Absolutely. Thank you yeah. for being here. And we'll get Tom. Awesome. Awesome. I think we'll get him at uh, Black Hat. Maybe we'll that's right. Black Hat from that Black Hat DefCon. Go ahead and give us a shot. Yeah. We'll be at DEF CON uh, ground floor, uh, I believe at Caesars Palace for DEF CON on the 28th, about 4 p.m. Nevada time, 1 p.m. here. And we'll have somebody in the studio uh, to Skype with us, and uh, hopefully you can stop by. Absolutely. All yeah. right. You promised me some shots, so I'll definitely be there. Yeah. We'll do some the shots. shots. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Cyber Underground. Stay safe.